Let's go back to the phone lines. We'll talk to Susan next. She's listening in Connecticut. Hi, Hank. Thank you for taking my call. It's my pleasure. Um, I have a question. There are um, a couple of women in my church who go to um, the abortion clinic about once a month, and they hold up posters with aborted fetus pictures, pretty gory, um, on them and um, kind of uh, show them to the women that are going in. Um, they also hand out tracks, too. Um, I have a problem with holding up a picture like that to women who are struggling um, with the issue of abortion. Um, how do you think would be a better way to handle that if you want to, um, you know, get the women to see Jesus and what his his you know, feelings are on life. Yeah, Susan, you know, one of the things that I think immediately as you speak is that if you're going to do that very thing, one must most certainly do it with a broken heart as opposed to a pharisaical attitude. Uh, Secondly, I think that one of the things that's necessary is to be willing to do something in a positive vein in terms of, of helping these women that as you mentioned, are struggling. Now, obviously, the people that are showing the pictures may have a broken heart, and they may actually recognize that there are two kinds of of women in harm's way here. Uh, The woman having the abortion and possibly the woman or the child that is female in their womb. And so maybe they care deeply about uh, both, and that's why they're there, and they're w- uh, there with a broken heart. They're they're willing to help in some in some way uh, that's productive, and, and and I think that's the big thing. It's not only, and we always have to find this balance. It's not only cursing darkness; it's building a lighthouse in the midst of the gathering storm. Now, I'm not suggesting that it is incumbent on every person that feels passionately about this. Uh, to be willing to adopt the baby or to be willing uh, to come up with some other kind uh, of a solution to the problem. But I will tell you this in general. The reason that you have the kind of culture that we have today is because people in the church have not done the basic thing that needs to be done, and that is to change the heart of a person. Because when the heart of a person changes, everything changes along with that. Now, I'm not offering here an either-or dichotomy because it can be both and, but I agree with you. There are methods that are used oftentimes that end up being counterproductive as opposed to productive. In other words, the moment the person walks into the Planned Parenthood office, the Planned Parenthood person seems to be the kind and the nurturing individual that's going to help them in a productive way with a problem, and the person outside who's yelling or screaming or showing pictures often seems to be the one unkind. So again, I I, I think that many times it's not a function of whether we should be doing these things, whether we should be exposing what's going on with Planned Parenthood, because I've been doing it on the broadcast. I mean, they're harvesting uh, the the organs of preborn children and selling them on the black market. I mean, it is an industry that is, it is beyond comprehension. Uh, so again, I want to be very measured in what I say, which is that when people expose that, it is a good thing. But we need to be gentle as as doves. We need to be wise as serpents in everything that we do. And, and, and so it really ultimately for me uh, gets down to the kind of attitude that we have if we are called by the Lord uh, to expose what is really going on, the silent uh, Holocaust in our midst. Yeah. Well, a couple of these women have actually adopted children that were going to be aborted. Well, look, I mean, <laughs> think about that for a moment. Uh, we, we've adopted children, and, and I will tell you that that is a person that's going in with a broken heart, a person that's not just 
cursing the darkness, but building a lighthouse. So that is very much to be a uh, commended because again, it is emblematic of where their heart is, and and that's what the Lord is looking at. I mean, we, if we're not rescuing the perishing in this time space continuum, um, who is? So, yeah, I, I, again, uh, we need to do what we do with wisdom. Uh, we want to do what we do in such a way that it's productive and not counterproductive. And you've just given a great example of someone who has a broken heart and is doing something in a productive fashion uh, in, in, in the midst of this abortion holocaust.